You may just be able to make this out in the mist but you've got this little island in front of the mainland at Althorn and that little island is called Bridge Marsh Island so I'll just read you a little bit there's a boat coming along production value <laughs> Bridge Marsh Island was originally protected from the sea on all sides by walls and embankments but due to neglect it was irretrievably flooded and is now only partly visible above the water. Until the 1930s the island offered valuable pasture for sheep and cattle. Its dikes and creeks were home to many ducks and eels and a pair of peregrine falcons nested annually in an old farm cottage. Morning! They didn't hear me. They're going out fishing. However, towards the end of the 1940s, strong easterly gales blew in an exceptionally high tide, demolishing the ill-kept ill walls and many animals and crops were lost to the sea. In the great tide of 1953, the coast suffered serious flooding and the remains of the island's walls were salvaged to fill the last breach in the sea defences at Norpits. Salt marsh is now developing rapidly on the island, providing a rich feeding ground for wildlife and silt is building up at its western end, which will eventually join it to the mainland. And that's Bridge Marsh Island. Wife farming appears to have been common practice in 18th century marshland Essex. In his journey through Essex, Daniel Defoe, author of Robinson Crusoe and Mole Flanders, tells of frequent encounters with men boasting 15 or more wives. Wives were sought from the uplands and taken back to the marshes to live. The men, born and bred on the marshes, fared well in the inclement weather, but their wives, unaccustomed to such a harsh environment, soon took ill and seldom lasted more than a year. The story goes that the men simply returned to the hills to fetch another. Such loyalty. <laughs> Sadly, we've got to say goodbye to the River Crouch. Definitely, definitely the main highlight of the walk, along with uh, the River Roach at the beginning, and of course the Wild Camp. And now we're at Upper Ray Pitts Farm, heading down here, and then we'll be heading uphill towards Canoodon and its church. It just keeps getting better. Best name ever for a lane. We're in the village of Canoodon. I've just stopped at the, the cost cutters. That was open. I've got myself a couple more uh, chocolate bars and a couple of fizzy drinks. I've got a can of Tizer. You hardly ever see that anymore. It's just for energy, really. And yeah, I'm heading towards the church now. Just going past the Anchor pub. It's really nice here. So Canoodon has its own village lockup. Um, which was restored in 1983 and it's also got a set of stocks circa 1775 so usually what they used to do with these lockups is uh, put like drunks and people that have been fighting and stuff in the taverns and the pubs in there overnight to sober up so it's like a small jail um, I've seen a few walks where there's a, a couple of these that's pretty cool a little window there and you see like the bars on the side of it and we're at the parish church of St Nicholas at Canoodon as well so of course this is the uh, the sort of the famous or infamous should you say church that uh, has a lot to do with like witchcraft in the area 
Throughout the 19th century, superstition was prevalent amongst the people of the Rochford Hundred, and belief in witchcraft and ghosts was commonplace. As you stand at the top of Beacon Hill at Canoodon, next to St Nicholas's Church, cast your eyes northwards down towards the River Crouch, and you may catch sight of the ghost of a headless woman dressed in silk. She has been seen riding down the hill on a hurdle towards the river. On reaching the crouch, she is said to disappear, only to reappear on the other side of the water. Even today, Canoodon has a reputation as the centre of witchcraft in the county. Some believe that witches still exist in the village <coughs> and claim that whenever a stone falls from the church tower, a witch dies, only to be immediately replaced by another. The witches of Canoodon are reputed to be allergic to wheel traffic and cast severe glances in the direction of any offending vehicles, bringing them to a sudden halt. Some local cyclists are still reluctant to ride into the village for fear that their wheels will seize up, but you should be safe walking. <laughs> it's funny, but I actually saw a large group of cyclists out earlier. They had no problems. Yeah. Fascinating. Unfortunately though, it's closed and I'm really really gutted about that because I really really wanted to go in this church but I'm just too early. <laughs> so, oh well. Moving on, this is the view from Beacon Hill where apparently you can see the ghost of the headless woman dressed in silk riding down towards the river, disappearing into the water and then appearing on the other side. After following the main road out of Canoodon for what seemed like eternity. We're now turning left off of that and heading up this quite steep hill for Essex up to the church of St Andrews at Ashingdon and apparently there's some really nice viewpoints up here. Here is the first of those views looking down from the church of St Andrews Ashingdon I'm absolutely fucked. This walk is an absolute killer. <laughs> of course it's a Sunday and I think there's service on at the moment, so I'm not going to go in there now. But yeah, what a lovely little church on top of this hill. Ashingdon, formerly Assendoon, Ass's Hill or Hill of Asser. Assingdon Church was built on the site of a battle fought between King Canute and Edmund Ironside in 1016. Canute, the Viking king, was victorious and built a minster of stone and lime on the hill for the souls of those who were slain. Today, St Andrew's Church stands on this site, housing a Danish flag and a model of a Viking ship, both gifts from the Danish embassy. St Andrew's also features an old sundial carved into its wall by the south entrance and an unusual clock commemorating King Edward VII. After a lot, and I mean a lot of road walking, we're now entering Hockley Woods. This is one of the most extensive areas of ancient woodland in South Essex, which has existed since about 12,000 BC, when primeval woods covered the county after the last ice age. The name Hockley includes the Saxon term Lee, meaning woodland clearing. Hockley woods still span over 130 hectares and have a network of over 20 kilometres of ancient earth banks within them, marking boundaries between Saxon landowners and medieval parishes. The woods have been designated a site of special scientific interest by English nature because of the variety of plants which grow there. Oak and sweet chestnut prefer the higher ground. Hornbeam grows in the wet clay. Birch in the more acidic soil and willows, hazel and ash line the streams. Many ground flora species such as dog's mercury, bluebell and wood anemone will only thrive in the undisturbed soil of ancient woodlands. The woods are now managed by Rochford District Council.
I'm outside the gates of Gusted Hall. You can't really see much because of this like high walls and trees and, and shit. But, uh, it was named after Peter Gristed in the early 14th century. It passed to William Harris in 1558, whose family attained great wealth and importance and was connected with the Percys, Earls of Northumberland. In 1840, Gusted Hall Estate contained 135 acres of woodland and pasture and was sold to George Wood, a solicitor from Rochford, who built up a valuable library of 3,250 books. He was also a keen horticulturalist who planted orchid, orchards and shrubs on the estate. Some of his specimen trees can still be seen today lying in the northern boundary of the scrubs. Crossing over the, the River Roach now. And yeah, this is obviously sort of further downstream. Say earlier on in the video, it was a lot bigger the river, so it's really hot out today. Really, really hot because it's bank holiday weekend. Everyone is out walking. <laughs> so I believe we're at Blatches, which is a group of houses here, and we're turning left. Okay, I'm on Hall Road. And I called into Google Maps. I'm 20 minutes away from Rochford, the finish point. It's about one mile. And uh, yeah, took a little wrong turn up there by Ashington Youth Football Ground. But I'm meant to rejoin Hall Road anyway, so I'm just walking along a longer section of it. Um, it's been emotional, this one bloody tough the mileage isn't necessarily the issue it's the mileage in a limited amount of time you need two full days really to do this walk to sort of take your time and enjoy it and stuff I've really rushed it and it has absolutely killed me it's also been two of the hottest days of the year and uh, yeah it's just horrible right see you in a bit So, for the highlights, definitely both rivers, the Roach and the Crouch. I think the Crouch just edges it up by Wallasey Island. Highlight number one, the River Crouch Estuary. And the Wild Camp. Then I would say, yeah, the River Roach. Been a few, there's been quite a few sections of like road walking and lovely views like this, building sites and that. Not great, but you know, can't have it all your own way. That's the highlights. I don't believe it. I've only gone and bloody done it. I've completed it. The Roach Valley Way, all 23 miles. Well, I reckon it's more than that. See, I'm back in Rochford. I know, beautiful looking. I cannot believe it. That has nearly killed me, that has. I ain't doing that again. Well, that's it all completed, guys. Tough, very tough. Good walk in places. A few bits were a bit boring, a bit naff, but got my energy drink now. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Let us know what you think, like, dislike, I don't give a fuck. Um, and uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe already. Please, fuck, I don't even know what I'm saying. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. That's it. <laughs> Anyways, I've got to go to work now. 
absolute joke. Anyway, I'm going to sleep for days. If I don't do another long distance walk in a camp next weekend, don't blame me. I'm having a break, okay? And I'm doing day walks, pub walks, keeping it simple, keeping it easy for a little bit. Anyways, hope you've enjoyed it. Cheers for watching. See you in the next one. Laters.